In this edition of Detroit Performs, an outdoor celebration of art in Detroit's Old Redford and Brightmoor neighborhoods. I began Sidewalk because I really wanted to celebrate the natural landscape and culture of the city of Detroit. So I wanted to build some artistic bridges across the city. So I wanted to go to the neighborhood that I grew up in and really celebrate the people and the culture of that neighborhood. Credit Card Detroit shares with us a piece on Art Lab J. Art Lab J is becoming, um, I think, a hub of Metro Detroit professional dance, so it's really great to be able to present work here, be able to network with other artists. An abandoned Detroit field turns into a summer blues jam session. And they look forward every week to coming out here. Some of them people, just like we start at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and go till dark, some of these people come out here at 10 o'clock in the morning to get a spot. And a modern painter takes cues from some of history's greatest artists. My teacher in Norway, when I modeled for him, showed me the importance of it when he might ask me to move my hand a little bit, and I realized that he was in the process of composing as he, as he painted. It's all ahead in today's episode of Detroit Performs. Major funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the McGregor Fund. Additional funding is provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and the National Endowment for the Arts and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Detroit Performs, everybody. I'm your host, DJ Oliver, and this week is very special to me as we get to tour my old stopping grounds, the Hillbury Theater, where I performed as a student at Wayne State University. But first up, we here at Detroit Performs believe arts can strengthen neighborhoods and bring people together. To illustrate, take a look at how Ryan Myers Johnson used visual and performing arts to transform Detroit's Brightmoor neighborhood. Ryan Myers Johnson. I am the founder of Sidewalk Festival of Performing Arts and I began Sidewalk because I really wanted to celebrate the natural landscape and culture of the city of Detroit. Um, right now Detroit is experiencing this amazing artistic renaissance but it's largely centered around Midtown so I wanted to build some artistic bridges across the city so I wanted to go to the neighborhood that I grew up in and really celebrate the people and the culture of that neighborhood. Um, I feel that there's a massively beautiful art scene in Detroit, but um, sometimes we get in our communities where the dance community is doing something or the music community is doing something. I really wanted to bring people together in a walkable, grassroots festival environment where they can feel comfortable and um, just get on the streets and dance, get on the streets and do music. So Sidewalk Festival is unlike any other festival happening in Detroit because we don't use any traditional stages. All of the performances take place in courtyards, sidewalks, alleys, um, community gardens. So it's all about um, community, landscape, culture of Detroit, and arts. Site-specific art is really about um, celebrating the the place in which it is um, produced. And so what I would like to do is um, sort of change how people see the space that they're in. I want people to understand that dance, music is something that doesn't just need to be contained in a theater. You can bring it anywhere. You can bring it to your front yard, to your backyard. So I really want to um, yeah, bring that message to people that art is everywhere. It doesn't have to be confined to a theater space or a museum. I grew up in Detroit and um, Detroit really nurtured me as an artist. Um, when I was really young, my first job actually was dancing for the city of Detroit. It was a program called um, Summer Youth Employment Program and we took classes down at Cobo Hall with professionals, we performed and then I went on to the Detroit School of Arts where I danced intensively, modern dance, ballet, tap, hip hop, everything. So Detroit really made me as an artist. Um, and. I can't say enough about how inspiring Detroit is. Just 
you know, I'm inspired by architecture a lot, and so Detroit is just very beautifully, beautiful architecturally. I mean, we hear a lot about Detroit and ruin porn right now, but that's really not what it's about. I mean, there's some of that stuff which is interesting. You know, there was a person that lived here. There's memories and all sorts of wisdom in those spaces that are abandoned now, but that's not what it is. I mean, Detroit is just an architectural jewel, and not to mention the abundance of community gardens and farms that we have in this city. So I'm a city country girl. I love it all. This is a chance to bring people directly to their shop who maybe don't know about it, you know, and just kind of activate the space of performance and then also just draw attention to the businesses they're doing. So it's a part of a larger scheme of placemaking. That's what we want to do with Sidewalk Festival. We want to take it to different neighborhoods and just really draw people from all over Metro Detroit and say, look at this place. It's not just Midtown. Midtown is awesome. But it's not just Midtown. It's also Brightmoor. It's also Cody Rouge. It's also North End. So that's part of our vision. Detroit is an amazing place to be an artist. I actually lived in New York for several years and I also lived in Japan and I've always been an artist. Um, I found so much fulfillment as an artist here and so much opportunity. I mean, it's not, some people think that Detroit is, you know, this kind of wild west no man's land where anybody can come and do anything. I mean, it's not about that. It's just really, there's a lot of opportunity and it's also a small community. So there's a lot of opportunity to engage with community. And um, yeah, I mean, we've got everything here, music, art, dance, and I think we're on the forefront of a new avant-garde, so yeah, it's a great place to be. To learn more about the Sidewalk Festival, head to DetroitPerforms.org. Let's check back in with Ryan Myers Johnson when Credit Card Detroit caught up with her at Art Lab J. Hi, my name is Ryan Myers Johnson. I'm a Detroit-based choreographer and dancer. I'm also the curator of Sidewalk Detroit, which is a festival of site-specific performing arts. And I presented a piece here at Art Lab J um, for, I guess, this weekend festival of Detroit-based arts. Um, I really enjoy performing at this space. This isn't my first time here. Art Lab J is becoming, um, I think, a hub of Metro Detroit professional dance. So it's really great to be able to present work here and be able to network with other artists and uh, meet people from all over who are really interested in the modern dance scene in Detroit. You can view more of Credit Card Detroit Citizen Reviews on their Facebook page and YouTube channel, which you can find through DetroitPerforms.org. And now, here's some upcoming events happening around Detroit. I am here with John Wolf, the chair of the theater and dance department here at Wayne State University. Welcome to Detroit Performs, John. Thank you, appreciate uh, it. All right, John, so this place obviously brings back so many memories for me being a performer here, but can you tell our Detroit Performers audience, what kind of performances do we actually have here in the Hillberry? Well, as you know, this is based in a classical training program, so we do a lot of classical theater. This year we'll open with Macbeth, later on we'll do a contemporary version of Moliere's The Doctor in Spite of Himself. But we also offer lots of other comedies, some thoughtful dramas, old favorites. We have Moon Over Buffalo, Big Love, um, Gross Indecencies, mm -hmm. The Three Trials of Oscar Wilde. And then at the end of the season, we're going to bring a much more contemporary play. In fact, it's the 2007 a Pulitzer Prize and Tony Award winner, August Osage County. So we try to create um, a nice variety for our audience. All right, and so what kind of performers actually perform here on the Hillbury stage? 
Well, the Hillbury stage is specifically for our graduate acting company and design and management company. Students come from all over the United States. This year we have actors from Seattle, New York. We have management students from as far away as Georgia, Connecticut. So we have students from all over the country who come here to be a part of our repertory theater. The rep it's the only repertory graduate theater company in the nation. Mm. It starts with them. Occasionally some less extensive roles might be handled by some undergraduate students. <laughs> I.e. me, back yes, in the day. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And this year, because August Osage County is such a large cast, yeah. Um, we are hoping to bring in a couple of professionals to work on the stage with the students also so they can make a few more contacts in the, in the business. All right. So what kind of audiences do you actually have here at the Hillbury Theater? No, our audiences are incredibly diverse. <laughs> um, of course, we have the ticket holders that have come for decades. Okay. Um, we are grateful to their constant support. Um, and they, they fill us up pretty well. We're very pleased to have such a large number. We then have a lot of young professionals that are looking for affordable, quality entertainment. Mm -hmm. You come to Midtown, perhaps they live in Midtown or downtown now, and so we become a nice place for them to go for a night out. And then, of course, there's the medical school and the law school and the graduate students and undergraduate students from on campus who we also um, like to bring into the theater. Mm -hmm. um, let's be clear, we have lots of seats available. Okay. So more people can come. So why is the Hillbury Theater so important to the Detroit art scene? Well, this is our 51st season. So we have a long tradition, which be, I think begins as the basis for why we're important. Um, on top of that, it's, we have bring 30, 33,000 people came last year to Midtown to see plays here at the Hillbury and the Bonstell mm -hmm. um, on down Woodward Avenue. So that's important. Absolutely. Um, along with that, we have our student matinee program and so we reach to students throughout the entire metropolitan area. And students come in to see plays, typically plays that are on their high school or middle school reading lists. So we try to augment their education as well as expose them to live theater. And then we also have a number of matinees for younger children and families that are uh, available to them. What inspires you though? What inspires you and what inspires the people that come in through these doors? Oh, great storytelling. Okay. Theater is about stories, having great stories that we tell. And then it's about that interaction, that personal interaction between the audience member and the actors on stage and what's happening. And what intrigues me the most as a, as a theater practitioner um, and as an audience member is the engagement of my imagination mm -hmm. and the imagination of of the audience, that they're willing to come in and believe what we're telling them. They buy the conceits and the concepts of that production to become part of and share that experience with us. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you so much, John. Thank this you. has been great, man. With no publicity, only word of mouth, over 500 Detroiters have been flocking to an abandoned field every summer Sunday for over 10 years to hear the blues. No money is charged, but a ducket in the bucket is asked to pay for grass cutting, a port john and a gas for the generator. There are some legendary performers who routinely show up to jam when they're passing through the Motor City. It's one of the city's best kept secrets. John's Carpet House, he had a porch that he put carpet on for the sound reinforcement, and they used to play on his front porch, and people would sit in his yard, usually family members, sit in his yard and be entertained. And his name was John, so they called it John's Carpet House. Then Pete got with him, and it became John's Carpet House and Big Pete's Place. John died, and Big Pete took it over. Carpet House people, how y'all doing? That's much better, yeah. One, two, three. John was actually a junk man, and he played drums on the side. And this was John's thing. He liked to get together, have a few drinks, and have the musicians come around, and they just kicked it around and start playing and everything. So that's basically what he did. And like I say, it might be 15 or 20 people over here. And everybody enjoyed it very, very much. A lot of these people you see, they're homeless, 
and some of them don't have anything. So all we want to do is try to get enough to sit there and pay for the cutting of the grass, the porter john. We don't charge nobody nothing. We do it because we enjoy doing what we do. Uh, a few years ago, somebody in Smokey Robinson's family died. So in it, way, his family heard about what we did out here. They come out here, they enjoyed it so much. We got all type of accolades. See, what I want to say, this is mainly for the adults, because like I said, when you're into the blues, we say a lot of things that we don't need to be saying around kids. We have a mixed audience. We have white, black. We have some of everybody out here. I mean, it's not a racial thing. It's people that enjoy good music and having fun. That's what be out here, and most of them are senior citizens. And if I had to guess the age, I would say from 50 to 85 be out here. And they look forward every week to coming out here. Some of them people, just like we start at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and go till dark, some of these people come out here at 10 o'clock in the morning to get a spot. We don't have no problems over here. We don't play that dumb stuff. Like I tell them, leave that dumb stuff at home. There's different bike clubs that come out here. It might be, you know, 50 or 60 bikers. They're all part of my security force. Well, we get, uh, we get quite a few whites come out here and they enjoy it, they tell their friends. And that's good and fine because that's what we want. We want a diverse crowd out here. And now they get a chance to hear what good blues is. Not this old country western mess that they, I shouldn't use that word, but anyway, it's a different type of blues. Let me tell you about some of the famous people that have been out here. We've had Thornetta Davis out here. We had Jackie Wilson's son and daughter, Brenda and uh, Jackie Jr. come out here. We had Sam Cook's daughter, Carla Cook, come out here. We got little Junior Walker's nephew come out here. We call him the rock star. We've had all type of celebrities. Anybody that's anything in the city comes out here. So when you come out here on a Sunday, ain't no telling who you might see. But I will go so far as to say this here. Uh, it's a jam session. But if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know how to play and you don't know how to sing, you're not going to get up here and jam with us. We want to keep it tight. And that's what we try to do. To learn more about the Summer Sunday Blues Sessions, visit DetroitReforms.org. Master painters such as Rembrandt and Cavaggio are the inspiration for our last featured artist. Luke Hillestead creates haunting images of art that capture a strong sense of emotion. Luke takes us into a studio for a painting session with one of his models. I want to include um, the story that I initially had for the painting, but also collaborate with my model. Because their story comes through on their face, and, and when it's real, it ends up always being better. I don't go for photorealism. There, there's a bit of an extra real thing that I, I'm trying to achieve. I studied music at the U of M and got a degree in classical guitar and music composition and took a few drawing classes in, in school. But it wasn't until after college and after I quit a job land surveying that I decided to become a painter. When I first started painting, I thought it'd be fun to do a bunch of paintings of my friends in hoodies and jeans. And then I tried to experiment to see what it would, what it would take to make things that look like they could be from any century, whether it's the past or the future. I like painting with live models. I like to get close with the models and learn about their story if I don't already know it. Is this, can you feel the heat? Is it too hot? It should be fine. Okay. You can't 
Caitlin Krolzak and I have known each other for a while. I'm fine with being Most sort of uncomfortable for a while. It's okay. not a huge yeah. deal, so whatever looks best. We're Facebook friends, so I see good photos of her, so I, I already picked out a good angle. <laughs> Look like up here. Yeah, and then drop your chin quite a bit. Yeah. And, and you can like stick it, stick it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm dividing the canvas into eight. It's just a guide, I guess. And then there's often compositional points uh, when, it, when you divide it into eight. So if you put a lot of weight on the three here or on the five there, that's something Rembrandt did a lot and something I try to model after. Mostly I try to go from nature. So whatever Caitlin's doing, I'll try to capture what's most special about that. I like painting from life for a sense of conversation. Sort of lean into it. You're kind of like, it's like... Like I'm Golem, like... Yeah, rah. well, yeah. <laughs> I like the energy and where it feels like a sense of urgency uh, with the paint. Nice, that's it. If you can, re that's the pose, if you can remember it. The shot that uh, you got in the photo is this quick action shot. Yeah. So it's gonna be hard to keep, but um, sort of the nature of painting, I guess. Just... You look worried in the painting so far. That's not how you look right now. Huh? Something's going wrong. I look worried uh, in the painting? So far. But it doesn't have to do with how you look. It just has to do with how the paint happened to move real quick. <laughs> I use a limited palette rather than any sort of other palette. I like to keep the colors as cohesive as possible. Create some sort of harmony within the colors. And I like painting. with a rough surface or with a lot of history. So you can tell that it's been worked through. Maybe I've changed my mind a lot with, the, with how the painting's going, just because that's how it goes. So I don't, I don't necessarily pre-plan everything that's gonna happen in a painting. I'll let it rest for times. I'll let it dry in different layers. And... You're doing really well. I'm actually a bit surprised how well you're holding this. Uh, the model might be there for a couple hours and I might change my mind multiple times with, within that time. And, and the relaxed atmosphere, the slow atmosphere, uh, gives me time to, I think, make, make better choices. Oh, my butt's numb. My teacher in Norway, when I modeled for him, showed me the importance of it when he might ask me to move my hand a little bit, and I realized that he was in the process of composing as he, as he painted. I had the opportunity to study with Odd Nerdrum in 2008. To go study with Nerdrum, I, I sent him a letter, sent him some pictures of my work, and asked him if I could. And then I got a letter uh, a number of months later saying, you're welcome to come, here's our address. It was an invitation, and, and so I bought a plane ticket and flew out there. It was a pretty intensive time of, of, of learning, just watching him and absorbing things. He didn't, he didn't talk much about technique. It mostly just came through apprenticeship style observing. I decided to study with Odd Nerdrum again for the second time, and I'll be going to Paris to stay for about four months. It's going to be a new city, so I'm hoping to paint outside more, get some sunshine, instead of being cramped up in an attic. He's a big inspiration as far as what's, what's possible. He's been painting for 45 years or so, and, and there's a lot of what he does that I, uh, that I hope to emulate, um, while also uh, going deeper into my own psyche or whatever and, and find out what what what, uh, what I'm supposed to be painting. You're gonna make me look like a goth chick. <laughs> Ooh, I'm alone, so low in the sky. It taps his feet around my bedside and it breaks the locks on all my dreams. Who hung the moon with his twisted beam? I think Luke's work is great. The light in his work is really amazing. Just the darkness and then the brightness, and that's something that's hard for a lot of painters to learn. So Luke is doing, you know, themes and stories. And I mean, there's not a lot of figural artists around, especially in the Twin Cities area. I look angry though. Well, not angry. Just making me relax. Not angry, <clears throat> just, uh, 
just a little worried. It might have to do with the pose. Any overarching themes uh, for me in painting? Probably center around being earnest. Try to avoid irony. Irony is good for jokes with people, but, I, but irony doesn't last in painting for me. And glowing flesh and transparent uh, spirit. I like to paint people because I like people. I like people around my studio. I like mimesis. I like being able to reproduce something I see. And the feeling I get for making it look similar and having a similar essence is really satisfying for me. To view more of Luke Hillestead's paintings, visit DetroitPerforms.org. And that wraps it up for this edition of Detroit Performs. For more information on arts and culture, visit DetroitPerforms.org, where you'll find featured videos, blogs, and information on upcoming arts events. Also, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'd like to thank the Hillbury Theater for letting us come by and hang out today. They'd love for you to come by and check out a show sometime this season. Until next time, get out there and show my Detroit performs. I am DJ Oliver. Thanks for watching, guys. Major funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the McGregor Fund. Additional funding is provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and the National Endowment for the Arts. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.